Oh, sorry. Let us look at a chart, both Rashi and the D9 or the Navamsha. Moon, Aries, Ketu, Gemini, Jupiter, Cancer, Lagna, Leo, Sun, Virgo, Saturn and Mercury in Libra, Venus in Scorpio, Rahu in Sagittarius, Mars in Capricorn. So if the planet is sitting in Leo and in Leo, Aries and Sagittarius, I will start counting from Aries. If the planet is sitting in Gemini and Libra, I will count it from Gemini, Libra and Aquarius, I will count it from Libra. If the planet is sitting in Cancer, Scorpio and Pisces, I will count it from Cancer. If the planet is sitting in Taurus, Vir Vir Taurus Virgo and uh, Capricorn, I will count it from Capricorn. So here, Moon is in the second Amsha, Ketu is in the fifth Amsha, Jupiter is in the second Amsha, Lagna is in the fifth Amsha, Sun is in the eighth Amsha, Saturn is in the fifth Amsha, Mercury is in the sixth Amsha, Venus is in the second Amsha, Rahu is in the fifth Amsha and Mars is in the first Amsha. So their corresponding places in the Navamsha chart will be Moon has gone to the second Amsha from counting from Aries. It has come to Taurus. Ketu is gone to the fifth Amsha. You are counting Ketu from Libra and you will put it in the fifth Amsha which becomes Aquarius. So then you have Jupiter. It, the starting point for counting for Jupiter is Cancer. It has gone to the second Amsha, so you will put it in Leo. Lagna is the starting point. Counting of Lagna is from Aries and the Lagna is in the fifth Amsha. So it will come back to Libra. The, uh, sorry, it will come back to Leo. Then Sun is in the eighth Amsha. The counting point for uh, Sun will be Capricorn and therefore it will come to Leo. Saturn is counting point will be Libra itself and it has gone to the fifth Amsha. Therefore, it will go and sit in Aquarius. Mercury is gone to the sixth Amsha. Counting from Saturn, it will go to Pisces. Venus is in the second Amsha. The counting point for Venus is from Cancer. Therefore, it will come back to Leo. Rahu is in the fifth Amsha. The counting point for Rahu is Aries. The fifth Amsha will be Leo. Therefore, it has come to Leo. Mars, Mars is in Capricorn. The counting point for Capricorn is starting from Capricorn. Therefore, Mars will remain in Capricorn. So, what we have understood is the planets that have been posted in D1 or placed in D1. The Amshas are their corresponding placements in D1 the D9. What is the use of learning the Navamsha position? Not only to understand the quality of the spouse the native will have, but also to understand the strength of each planet. Which means that if a planet has gone and posted itself in a favorable house or unfavorable house, you will see that the lagna of this chart remains in the same house so thereby the lagna will become strong this lagna which is same in the navamsha and d9 is called a varkottama lagna jupiter now has gone to the second house and is in the friendly house therefore he is well placed Ra venus who is in his enemy's house and is not favorably placed Rahu is also in his enemy's house and therefore not well placed. Mars was exalted in the Rashi chart. Mars remains exalted in the Navamsha chart. Saturn has gone to his own house and Ketu who is a friend of Saturn is with Saturn. Mercury who was well placed in the, in the Rashi chart is now badly placed in the Navamsha chart because it has become Nietzsche. Moon who, who was placed in Aries 
is now become exalted in Taurus and therefore well placed. Therefore, what do we understand by this horoscope is that the planets that are well placed will support the, uh, the Rashi chart during the Dashas of the corresponding planets. In my next class, we shall do the SAR system. Thank you.